according to a recent survey of single people, the sexiest accent in North America belongs to the Southern Belle. The great English politician Winston Churchill himself once said, the most beautiful voice in the world is that of an educated Southern woman. This lesson is designed to help you affect a convincing Southern drawl using key vowel and consonant substitutions when applied to a text. So if you're of the female persuasion, this lesson carries added significance. And fellas, I'm not privy to how ladies react to a man with a drawl, but in my experience, you either go country or you go home. So, exaggerate the R endings. Entirely, fortunate, heard, apart, surfaced. Um, the typical American speaker pronounces these words with a similar uh, hard retroflexed R. Entirely fortunate. But the southern speaker lathers it in buttermilk. Heard, apart. Carries a greater nasality as well. A support group for those desirous of sobriety during a particularly dark period of my wasted years. Next thing you want to do is you want to draw the short A. So it sounds like fat, dragged, manner. From what you're reading in the papers about the gentrification of American society, you think the southern accent was disappearing faster than cold butter on a hot biscuit. But spend a few days in South Carolina, and you'll hear folks all around stretching out this short A. Fact, dragged, manner. I've had enough liquor to last a lifetime. Place an up before the long A. Games, way, grace. Sit spell, listen and learn. The recipe for this is simpler than the rules for attending the debutante ball. In the standard American accent, the long A is produced in a straight line, so to speak, with nothing coming between the initial consonant and the vowel. Place faces. A uh, southern speaker adds an uh before the A. Uh, A. Place faces. I made a call on a lady friend. Now, the following is an excerpt from a horror novel, a Pandora 2013 Hullabaloo. In this speech, a man describes his relationship with alcohol and how he was able to give up drinking. This here is a Roy Rogers. It's made with cola and non-alcoholic grenadine syrup. Uh, Shirley Temple uses ginger ale or sometimes 7-Up or Sprite. I've had enough liquor to last a lifetime. As a point of fact, I used to drink for this country in the Olympic Games. A man never entirely solves his problems, but if he's lucky, he might outgrow them. I made a call on a lady friend I spent time with during a particularly dark period of my wasted years. She hadn't heard from me since the evening a New Orleans policeman dragged me from the hotel room. She and I were in the process of ripping apart with our teeth. Her name surfaced in my drunken thinking, something about the manner in which she once served me a screwdriver with breakfast. When I bulldogged my way into the hair salon she was currently working in, she had the grace to invite me to a support group for those desirous of sobriety. That angel handed me the key into the Chinese puzzle of the world. I found the strength to get right with myself, to stop levitating over my issues, to place my feet on the ground, to begin to enjoy everything around me. It was a simpler time. I only had one thing to quit. Young people suffer from what I term an overdose of technology. Twitbook, Google Tube. Addiction presents itself with many faces. Now, the latest notion of the South is that everyone talks with a mouthful of tobacco. Hmm. Perhaps you began this tutorial with the fuzzy understanding of a ranked beginner. Hopefully, these easy to follow vowel and consonant changes served as an entry point. It is suggested you repeat the lesson to master the fundamentals, which are key to long term success. Let these bullet points be your guide. Y'all come back now, you hear?